Now, if we look at waves propagating through a medium, uh, they'll be being transferred by mechanical waves most of the time. So what is a mechanical wave? Well, it turns out that adjacent particles can influence each other through contact forces. So for a longitudinal wave through a solid or a liquid or a gas, this influences simply the particles colliding with each other. So if a gas particle is vibrating left and right, then it will bump the particles to the left and right of it, and that will cause the disturbance to propagate through the gas. If we look at a wave on a string over here, we can see that the tension forces between each section of the string are what are causing the string to go up and down and cause the wave to travel across. So we can see the forces on each part of the string over here. So each part of the string or each particle of the gas will push or pull on its neighbors. And by exerting this minor force on their neighbors, they'll cause the disturbance, the wave, to propagate through the medium. Now it's possible to transmit a wave uh, using other forces instead of contact forces. If we shake an electron at one side of the room, then we generate an electromagnetic disturbance. And this electromagnetic disturbance will propagate without using contact forces between the electrons, right? Instead, it will be using electromagnetic forces. So this is a different sort of uh, wave. It's not a, longitud uh, not a longitudinal wave, and it's not uh, a mechanical wave because it doesn't use contact forces. It is, in fact, a transverse electromagnetic wave. And so if we look at the electromagnetic fields created, we can see the electric field in white and the magnetic field in blue. So we can see that if the wave is traveling from left to right, both the electric field and the magnetic field are perpendicular to the direction of motion. And therefore, it's a transverse wave and not a longitudinal wave. Now, aside from light, we have some other forms of electromagnetic wave which don't rely on contact forces to travel. So, aside from light, we have radio waves, microwaves, which are used to cook food inside a microwave oven, infrared and ultraviolet light, x-rays, and gamma radiation. So all of these are very different forms of wave, but they're all electromagnetic waves. So going from top to bottom, this goes from in fact the lowest uh, energy wave to the highest energy wave. So radio waves will have less energy in general than infrared and ultraviolet light. And of course, visible light is sandwiched right in the middle of these. And gamma radiation will have far more energy than any of these other forms of electromagnetic radiation. However, they are all electromagnetic radiation, and so they're all caused in the same way, and they all propagate in the same way. And now it turns out that they don't actually need electrons to propagate. They can propagate just through having the electric and magnetic fields. And because of this, they can travel through a place even if there are no electrons. This means that they're propagating through a vacuum. Identify four types of mechanical and electromagnetic waves. Well, let's do the mechanical waves first, shall we? So mechanical waves are waves that travel through a medium by means of the particles inside the medium vibrating. And each, vibra each vibration of a particle will cause the particle next to it to vibrate due to contact forces. So in this case, we can look at things like sound, which is air particles vibrating back and forth and knocking the air particles next to them and those will vibrate back and forth and therefore hit the particles next to them and so the disturbance will propagate outwards. Another example is water waves. In this case it's the water particles knocking each other back and forth or moving up or down and pulling each other together with surface tension. So ripples on the top of the water are carried by surface tension so it's a form of mechanical wave and sound waves underwater are carried through uh, collisions between water particles. And so once again, that's a mechanical wave. Seismic waves are what cause earthquakes. These travel through the ground like a sound wave, except rather than air particles vibrating, uh, rock particles are vibrating. Finally, transverse waves on a guitar or violin string. If 
we pluck or bow a guitar or violin string, the string will vibrate and that will cause the air particles near it to vibrate, which will of course produce sound. Alright, so we've listed four different mechanical waves now. Let's get on to some electromagnetic waves. So these are the invisible waves that propagate and cause things to light up. We can see them uh, with our eyes if they're shining straight in, and so we can see them reflected of other things. So right away we can say that visible light is one form of electromagnetic wave, but it turns out that there are some forms of wave that we can't see, even if they're shining into our eyes. And those are things like ultraviolet light, which comes from the sun and causes sunburn, infrared light, which we usually feel as heat, and finally something like radio waves, which travel invisibly and can be used to transmit information over long distances. Recall two differences between mechanical and electromagnetic waves. This should be fairly easy, I hope. Mechanical waves have to travel through a medium because they travel through particles interacting with each other mechanically or through contact forces, right? Electromagnetic waves don't need this. They travel by creating uh, alternating electric and magnetic fields and with these they can travel through empty space. Another difference is that different sorts of mechanical waves will propagate at different speeds depending on the medium. So for example sound waves generally travel faster than waves caused by surface tension on the surface of a pond. But all electromagnetic waves travel at the same speed and they travel at, in fact, uh, faster than any other wave in the universe can travel. 